Developing this morning in Greenville, investigators are looking for leads after a man was shot and killed at a nightclub. And now the sheriff's office plans to take steps to shut the place down. Fox Carolina's Lindsay Gibbs is live in Greenville this morning. Lindsay, tell us more about why. Nicole, we're here at Club Cream. Investigators say they haven't made any arrests in this case after a man was found here shot to death. Now, the club has gone through a few different name changes in the past, but as of right now, they're really trying to piece together what happened that Monday morning. Now, the Greenville County Coroner identified the victim as 24-year-old Elijah McDuffie, who was shot and killed inside the club. Deputies say they responded to the call here on Congaree Road around 1.30 Monday morning. Witness tell us shots were fired off, causing people to scramble, running to get to safety. The shooting has reignited concerns over whether the club should be shut down after previous violence here. One activist says safety at the club falls on the owners, but we spoke to another man who's close to management and he says he doesn't agree. What has happened here is, is has nothing to do, I can say it has absolutely nothing to do with the owners. The responsibility of a club owner, just like any other businesses, is their job to make sure that people are protected. We looked into our archives this morning. We found we've covered two other shootings related to the club cream in the last year and a half. The sheriff's office tried to shut down the club last June, but it was blocked by a judge's appeal, allowing it to remain open. And we've been in contact with the sheriff's department this morning. They say they're in the process of trying to get the club closed down once again. They also ask if anyone has any information as to what happened that Monday morning to please come forward. You are able to remain anonymous. Back to you. Thanks, Lindsay. Well, now over to Anderson County. Another murder investigation underway after a man was found dead. This was the scene along Irby Road Sunday night. The coroner's office identified the victim as 48-year-old Todd Craven. They say he died of traumatic injuries, but it's unknown what may exactly have caused them. This morning, we are working to get an update from the sheriff's office. Remember, you can stay up to date on all your headlines through the Fox Carolina News app. All you have to do is search Fox Carolina in the App Store or Google Play. Now to a news alert from the CDC this morning. The agency says the pandemic is threatening to reverse years of progress made in patient safety. This is really concerning. We looked into the recent analysis from the CDC, which found four out of six routinely tracked infections saw major increases last year when hospitals were flooded with COVID patients. Now these include staph infection, bloodstream infections, urinary tract infections, and ventilator associated infections. Approximately 20% of those can lead to major complications or even death. Doctors say that the influx of COVID-19 patients and increased use of medical devices created the perfect opportunity for hospital associated infections to just prosper. Sticking with the pandemic now, cases are on the rise in much of the country. And according to Johns Hopkins, the seven day average of new cases was more than 300% higher than last Labor Day. The jump in cases has translated into overcrowded hospitals and a rise in infections in children. Now experts fear that Labor Day gatherings could have made it all worse. The risks played out last year. Cases surged in 31 states two weeks after Labor Day. One big difference this year, of course, is that highly contagious Delta variant plus the access to the vaccines. Here's a breakdown of recent cases across South Carolina. It's a look at the total number of new cases each week for the last month. In the last full week of August, we counted nearly 35,000 cases. This could be due to students returning to school. However, the total did dip significantly last week with just about 21,000. Here is a closer look at the breakdown of new COVID-19 patients by age. Over the last month, a third of new cases are in people 20 years old or younger. Meanwhile, people ages 11 to 20 make up a fifth of the new cases. It's particularly um, partly because older people are more likely to have gotten the vaccine, as well as the fact that kids younger than 12 don't have that access yet. 808 this morning, Fox Carolina is your school station and starting today, students in Oconee County could face consequences for not masking up on the bus. It's the latest step the district is taking to implement the mandate and Fox Carolina's Grace Runkle is live in Walhalla with more Grace. 
Well, that's right. That statewide bus mask mandate has been in place for about a week now, but here in Oconee County, district officials wanted to make sure that parents and students had some time to get used to that new rule before they started implementing consequences. So let's walk you through this. Starting today, when a student gets on the bus not wearing a mask for the first time, they will receive a verbal warning. The second time they do it, they'll get a call home. And finally, they could be suspended from the bus for a day. And if it keeps happening, possibly even the rest of the year. Now we talked with parents across the state. Some are happy because this is something their kids have already been doing. But one mom tells us she thinks the choice should be hers. Now she feels like she's left with two options. One being take her daughter off the bus. Or I'm just going to let her do as she chooses, you know, which she's choosing not to wear a mask. You know, I also teach my kids to have their own mind and think for themselves. So if someone's not wearing a mask, that doesn't, you know, give you the right to take yours off. I want you to still remain safe and still think about others and wear your mask. The Department of Education says no child will be denied bus service for not wearing a mask, but they say that it is going to be up to the school districts to come up with the consequences and make sure that they're enforced like they're doing here in Oconee County. Mark Amanda.